Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my favorite series, and today we're going to be talking about my favorite online games. As a gamer, I love playing games with my friends, and I love playing you know, cooperatively versus, although I, I like co-op a lot more than I like versus, and, you know, I was in high school in the 90s, graduated in 98, and that was like the star of couch co-op. And, or at least those years were the, the, the span of like just huge amounts of couch co-op. I absolutely loved it. I I would trade those days for nothing. But as I've become an adult, or some people might call me an old man because I'm over the age of 40, uh, <clears throat> but I digress. As I've become an adult, a lot of my friends have moved away. Uh, now, with the invention of the internet, though, I didn't have to give up my friends. I got to stay in touch with them and even created, created, <laughs> even met new people and new friends to, to play online games with. And that's what I'm celebrating here are some of my absolute favorite online gaming experiences. Some of them are a little bit basic and not too flashy and stuff, but others, they just meant the world to me, especially when like things happened, like friends move away temporarily for college or move hundreds of miles away to like another state to go live or even something as crazy as meeting someone on YouTube and playing in their D&D game. Also, uh, like plug, Chris the Old Ass Retro Gamer uh, runs a great and wonderful Tides of Flame campaign that I get to play in. Uh, probably got a lot of his episodes up on his channel now that, because I released videos a little bit on a later schedule than most people. But... This is a major thing for me. Online gaming is always been just a great leap in technology. Now it will never, for me personally, it will never ever replace couch co-op. That feeling of camaraderie and sitting next to somebody else and just having fun. But when all else fails and you can't be there and your friend is hundreds of miles away. online gaming yeah online gaming is good and being able to pick up and do it at a moment's notice and have it be ultra convenient like it is is beyond great for me i absolutely love it and I don't think I would give up any of these online experiences for the world. They helped grow friendships. They helped strengthen friendships. And these are some of my favorite online games. So one of my favorite experiences with online games. When the Dreamcast came around, it was one of the first systems that came with the modem built in. You didn't have to buy it separately. And that was a great thing. You got to have everything right there, no added stuff, just hooked it up to your internet. And yes, it was a 56K modem. And you just went. And this game was very important to me because my friends had left to go to college and, you know, they were two or three hours away. That meant I didn't get to spend 
every weekend with them like I was used to before they graduated high school and went to college. And I kind of missed that. I missed being around them. I missed having that social interaction with like-minded people. And we all discovered this game. And we all discovered that we loved this game. And honestly, I, I don't think I would be the gamer today without this game. So, without any further ado, the game is Fantasy Star Online. Now, the Fantasy Star Online series is a popular action RPG franchise developed and published by Sega. The series began with a release of Fantasy Star Online or the Dreamcast in 2000, and since has been released on multiple platforms, including the GameCube, Xbox, PlayStation 2, and PC. Uh, they've even gone so far as to put it on the PlayStation Portable, although they called it something different, but it's essentially the same game and the same experience, just a few things changed, a few new levels, a few new weapons, that kind of thing. You know, still in the same vein, just more of the same experience. Or expanded. So the series is known for its unique blend of fantasy and science fiction elements, as well as the emphasis on online multiplayer play. The player takes on the role of a member of an elite group of hunters, known as the Hunter's Guild, and must explore a variety of different planets and environments, fighting off hordes of enemies and completing various quests and missions. One of the key features of Fantasy Star Online series is the emphasis on cooperative multiplayer gameplay, and here's why. Me and my friends love this game. Players can team up with friends or other players online to tackle challenging missions and boss battles. The series also features a robust character customization system, allowing players to create and customize their own unique characters. And there was even a class system. Be someone who's at range. You could have someone who uses big heavy weapons and no magic. You could have someone who does lighter weapons. Have someone who does lighter weapons and magic. I mean, and just or a pure magic person. This game had everything. Overall, the Fantasy Star Online series is a must-play for fans of action RPGs and online multiplayer games. It is a unique blend of fantasy and sci-fi elements, engaging multiplayer gameplay, and robust character customization system that makes it a standout in the genre. The next game we're going to talk about is one that I was very lucky to come across. I... I would have missed this game, to be honest, if I had just not picked it up and looked at it because I had owned or recently purchased a PlayStation TV. And when I say PlayStation TV, I mean the one that's like the little one that's the game system. It's the Vita, essentially. I picked that game. I picked up that system in a trade with, you know, one of the people who lives nearby. It's Captain Natron. And... When I got that system, I started exploring games for it because, hey, I got a system, so I want to have more and more and more games for it, and so I started collecting again, and I started collecting fairly heavily. And this is an online game that was that online, co-op, it was to uh, one to four players, had RPG elements, leveling with equipment and all of this other stuff. It it had team-like mechanics where you had one person who could take hits better than the other, so you wanted them in the front line so they would tank. You had one person that was essentially team mom and stuff and brought all of the 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 food for the players and stuff and it was just a really, really well made. And I picked it up for the Vita. And then I picked it up 
for the PlayStation 3. Then I picked it up for the PlayStation 4 because the Steelbook was on sale and I was really enjoying the game and I wanted to play it across multiple systems. Then I picked it up digitally on the Vita and I picked it up digitally on the PlayStation 4 so that I could essentially host an entire party here at my house if I wanted to. But online this game, I played it with Sinchatus. Uh, I played it with Chris the Old Ass Retro Gamer, hoping to play it with Scott and Jen in the near future. But that game is Dragon's Crown. And yes, I know, I know what you're about to say. Oh, you're just in it for the visuals. Eh. I mean, I get that it's like very cheesecake and a little bit on the saucy side, but the game is really fun. And anyone who wants to say, oh, it's just for the cheesecake visuals and you're just wanting to stare at the Amazon and want to stare at the sorceress, play the game first. Play it first. And then come back to me about, you know, saying that it's all about the, the, the over-sexualized visuals of this game. I'll, I'll admit, yes, there are very, very over-sexualized characters in this game. But that can only keep your attention for so long. And I've platinumed this game twice. And I have characters that are over 100 levels. Heck, I've helped other people beat this game on their live stream. And this game is great. And just give it a chance, guys. Just give it a chance. Dragon's Crown is a 2D action RPG developed by Vanillaware and published by Atlas. That's right, folks. It's Atlas. What does the lightsaber samurai say about Atlas? Bye, bye, bye. Because the... Quantities of their titles are very low, low, low. So if you don't like the game, buy it. Hold on to it for a year, and then probably sell it for twice what you bought it for. So the game takes place in a fantasy world where the players take on a role of a powerful warrior, mage, thief, sorceress, or whatever to embark on a journey to, un to uncover secrets of the dragon's crown. First thing that stands about stands out about Dragon's Crown is the gorgeous hand-drawn art style. The game's characters and environments are incredibly detailed, well animated, and the game's overall aesthetic is simply breathtaking. The game's soundtrack is also quite impressive, with a mix of epic and atmospheric tracks that perfectly complement the game's action and exploration. As for gameplay, Dragon's Crown is a fast-paced, action-packed experience. Players will hack and slash their way through hordes of enemies, using a variety of weapons and abilities to take down bosses and uncover new areas. The game's combat is smooth and responsive, and players will find themselves constantly engaged in intense battles. Overall, Dragon's Crown is a fantastic, action RPG that is well worth playing. The game's art style, soundtrack, and gameplay are all top-notch, and the game's co-op multiplayer mode is a great addition. If you're a fan of action RPGs, you won't want to miss out on this one. The next game we have here is one that I actually didn't discover. Um, my friends in Shadas discovered this game, and we had enjoyed one of the other games that this company had created so much by playing couch co-op with it all the time and even found a way of playing it on Steam online multiplayer that when this studio came out with their latest title, he caught wind of it before I did, played it a little while, realized that it was an absolute gas to play and I picked it up and it just fell in from there. This is a great title. 
and it is hit people by behemoth and yes this is the same behemoth that created castle crasher so let's get to it hit people is a turn-based strategy game developed by the behemoth the game features a colorful cast of characters and unique art style that sets it apart from other games in the genre. One of the most striking things about Pit People is its art style. The game is filled with vibrant colors and a widely and a wide variety of characters, each with their own unique look and personality. The characters are all well designed and have a lot of personality, which makes it easy to become invested in the game. Gameplay in Pit People also is a standout feature. The game is a turn-based strategy game with players taking turns moving and attacking with their characters. The game also features a variety of different types of characters, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. This makes for a lot of strategic possibilities and keeps the game fresh and interesting. The game also features a robust single-player campaign as well as multiplayer mode. The campaign is well written and engaging, with a lot of interesting characters and locations to discover. The multiplayer mode is also a lot of fun and allows players to team up and take on challenges together. Overall, Pit People is a fantastic game that is sure to provide hours of entertainment. The art style is unique and engaging, the gameplay is fun and strategic, and the single player and multiplayer modes are both well done. I highly recommend this game to fans of turn-based strategy games. The next game we're going to talk about is one that honestly went by way too fast. It had its time in the sun, but I feel that it was a little too brief. Kind of hoping that Sony decides to, you know, reach back into the catalog, bring this up front, and let more people have fun with it online. Uh, like I said, I, I, I just, I think I missed the boat on this one, unfortunately. But I love this series. And the idea of how chaotic it could possibly be with four players playing this game all at the same time is just hilarious to me. And that game is Ratchet and Clank All for One. Ratchet and Clank All for One is a fantastic addition to the beloved series. The game brings back classic Ratchet and Clank gameplay that fans have come to love with new and exciting features that make it one of the best games in the series. The graphics in the game are absolutely stunning, vibrant colors and detailed environments. The characters are well designed and the animation is both smooth and fluid. The game's art style is reminiscent of previous games in the series, but with the added level of detail and polish that makes it feel like a new and more modern game. Gameplay in Ratchet and Clank All for One is a perfect blend of action and adventure. The game features a variety of weapons and gadgets that players can use to take down enemies as well as a variety of different environments to explore. Overall, Ratchet and Clank All for One is a fantastic game that is a must play for fans of the series. The game's stunning graphics, engaging gameplay, and well-written story make it one of the best games in the series and a must-play for fans of action-adventure game. I highly recommend this game to anyone who's looking for a fun and engaging gaming experience. Our next game that we're going to talk about is one that I picked up in 2010. I think it was on the day that it was released. And I really picked it up because it reminded me of an anime that I was really into at the time. And I wanted this to be kind of a mirror to that. And the anime was Vision of Escaflone. And if you've seen Vision of Escaflone and you know the game that released in 2010, I bet you can actually guess what this game actually is 
that would be White Knight Chronicle. I know that it's mainly kind of just a standalone RPG game, but there was an online component to it that was really a lot of fun. White Knight Chronicles is a role-playing game developed by Level 5 and published by Sony Computer Entertainment. The game was released for the PlayStation 3 in 2010 and features an open-world setting a deep, engaging story, and a robust combat system. The story of White Knight Chronicles centers around a young man named Leonard who discovers that he has the power to transform into a powerful, armored knight called White Knight. Along with a group of friends and allies, Leonard sets out on a journey to save the kingdom from an ancient evil. The story is filled with memorable characters and a well-written narrative that will keep players engaged throughout the game. One of the game's strongest features is its combat system. Players have a variety of weapons and abilities to choose from, and the game's real-time combat system allows players to take on enemies in a fast-paced and strategic battle. The game also features a unique geomagic system, which allows players to manipulate the battlefield to their advantage. The game's open-world setting is also a highlight. Players can explore a variety of locations, including forests, caves, and towns, and will encounter a wide range of enemies and side quests. The game's visuals are also impressive, with detailed character models and lush environments. Overall, White Knight Chronicles is a solid role-playing game that offers an engaging story, challenging combat, and a vast open world to explore. While the game may not be as popular as other RPG titles, it is definitely worth playing for fans of the genre. And the last thing we're actually going to talk about here is not a game. And, and, and I know, I know what you're about to tell me. How could you be talking about online gaming and not talk about a game? Well, I'm going to be talking about a peripheral, and honestly, this peripheral gave me my first email address, and it was excessively long, had all kinds of numbers and letters and all this other stuff, and there's absolutely no way that I could ever replicate it or even do anything. And it, but. The system was how I got to stay in contact with a friend that moved away during middle school. And I'm kind of thankful for that. I mean, I got to play online games with it and stuff, and um, you know, mainly just versus games and player versus player kind of thing. And, but yeah, it, it gave me my first email address, and I got to keep a friend for that had moved away for a lot longer than I normally would have been able to keep that friend. And that's that was the magic that, that this device gave me. And it's it's the X band for the Super Nintendo. And Yes, I did play online with it. I played Doom, and I played Weapon Lord, which I kind of regret playing because it's so choppy and slow. Uh, and I played Super Street Fighter 2, and I mean, just... If it had X-Band ca capability, I tried to get the game to play it online. So, with all of that, the X-Band for the SNES was, is a unique and innovative accessory that allows players to connect to other players over the telephone line and play head-to-head -head in various games. This feature was a first for the home console market and was a major selling point for the X-Band. The setup process for the X-Band is relatively straightforward and easy to follow. The device itself is small and, com is small and compact, making it easy to easy to store and transport. Software is also user-friendly, 
and easy to navigate. The only downside to the setup process is that players must have a telephone line available in order to connect to other players. Once connected, players can compete in various games such as Super Mario Kart, Street Fighter 2, and Mortal Kombat. Head-to-head -head gameplay is smooth and responsive, with minimal lag. The matches are also very competitive and intense, making for a great gaming experience. The X-Band also includes a built-in messaging system that allows players to communicate with each other during gameplay. This feature is a great way to trash talk and make new friends. And boy, was there ever some trash talking. Overall, the X-Band for the SNES is a must-have accessory for any serious gamer looking to for a competitive and immersive experience. Well, back then it was. The ability to connect to other players over the telephone line is a revolutionary feature that adds a new dimension to gameplay. The messaging system is also a great addition that adds to overall gaming experience, and I would honestly highly recommend picking one of these up if you are a collector of older hardware and wanted to, you know, just keep it for nostalgia's sake. I really enjoyed it back in the day, but now with how the bulletin board system is down and stuff, I honestly think that it would be better to get a Raspberry Pi and emulate so that you can play online that way. And that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and I look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.